Hey, this is Brendan Martin, co-founder of Joe, and I have a special guest here with me today, uh, Nate Murphy from The Coffee Ethic in Springfield, Missouri. Um, we're here to, to just kind of share more resources and information um, with other coffee shop owners and baristas um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, coffee Ethic came on the Joe Network um, and has been able to um, remain open while ensuring that their baristas and customers are, are safe. Um, and so I wanted to bring Nate in and um, talk a little bit about how he's doing this and what he's seeing and share any insights that he may have with the rest of the coffee owners in the, um, in the coffee industry. So Nate, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm Nate Murphy, exit from the coffee ethic here in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, I'm the general manager and head roaster and I've, uh, we've been at a coffee shop now for a little over 12 years here in the Ozarks. Wow. That's amazing. And I think almost everybody might know of the Ozarks after watching, if you have Netflix, so. Right. Yeah, yeah, on the map. Yeah. That takes place just a, a couple hours north of us. So right there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think one thing, you know, that you have going for you is you guys have been in business for 12 years, right? And you guys are roasting for the last six. Um, right. And so it must really help too during this time to have a, a solidified customer base and I've kind of go through this. So there might be others out there um, who are brand new. You know, I, I have a lot of people reaching out to me who are brand new coffee owners being like, what do we do? So uh, I have a few questions for you, but if you, yeah. maybe, you know, put yourself in the shoes uh, when you were early on those first couple of years, how, how this uh, might impact you as well. Absolutely. So just for everybody watching, we have about six questions really geared towards um, kind of picking out the resources and, and insights that Nate has learned and um, share it with you all and hope that it may or, um, help you out in your own business as well. So Nate, first question, um, what have you guys done to adapt to um, and respond to COVID? Yeah, I mean, uh, we took, obviously the precautions that we took, like now, uh, you know, our lobby is completely closed. Um, we're lucky enough where the weather is at least somewhat nice this time of year. So we moved all of our registers to basically outside to try and eliminate any sort of contact. Um, We've also tried to kind of eliminate like a lot of overlapping shifts. So people working together. Um, if you end up working with someone, you're working with them pretty consistently, just in oh, case if something spreads. It's it's hopefully a little bit more isolated. And of course, everything else, gloves, face masks, uh, you know, hand washing techniques. A lot of it we already knew since we were a restaurant business. So, uh, yeah. but we're just trying to make sure we take every precaution and not only just to be safe, but also to let our customers see that and feel safe when they're coming in. Um, because there's a lot of value in that perceived safetyness. So, absolutely. You know, so we were here in Seattle, so we were sort of the, the initial one that hit the epicenter. So, how is it in Springfield, Missouri, in terms of just um, your customer perception? In terms of uh, like here in Seattle, it was very it, it hit close to home. No pun intended. Where people were passing away. Is that like that in Springfield, Missouri, or has it not really gotten there yet? It was a little bit slower since, since we're in the center of the country. It takes a little bit sometimes longer for that stuff to spread. But however, it, like uh, the local officials took a lot of early steps to try and get it controlled as us as a city. But still, we're starting to see a lot of booms. Like we just hit our spike as a state, um, I believe, just a few days ago. Okay. Uh, so right now, we're starting to really just see it ramp up in our community. Yeah. So I love that you said, I love, I haven't heard that yet where you keep the same baristas on at the same time. I think that's a great idea. Um, we have seen other coffee shops doing things like putting sanitizers at the hot spots, but it's great that you have your stuff outside. Um, so that's, that's really great. I think that's stuff that I haven't heard of yet. So oh, thanks, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, how are you keeping uh, baristas and customers safe? And it kind of sounds like you kind of already mentioned that through the baristas, but um, anything else that you're doing um, on top of any of that? Uh, I mean, that that's the most of it is, yeah, just like even like precautions that are just recommended, like face masks right now aren't required in our city, but we just go ahead and implement it just again, just just to be on the, the safe side and then trying to move a lot of our products to more grab and go products, stuff that we can get ready ahead of time to just eliminate as much contact as possible. Awesome. And that's where the Joe app really helps too, is just people being able to pay ahead of time via an app. We don't have to worry about trying to, even with contactless payment, just there's, there's still a lot of like potential for cross contamination. So. Yep. That's one thing we mentioned in our blog is um, the six feet rule, right? So if, right. You're, if your POS is within six feet of the machine, then you're, 
potentially contaminating the, the machine where you're actually making the coffee and that can be a, spread as a hot spot. Um, and so some shops even are putting a barrier between the POS and waiting for the customer to come up to pay with a credit card until yeah. the pizza has left six feet away. So um, and that's, that's why we took those steps of moving our POS as far away and like not having customers come in again, that's not an option for everybody, but mm -hmm. um, for us, even on cold days, like we just have kind of a very isolated area. That's about probably 10 or 15 feet from our machine, just, just to add that extra safety. So, and on yeah. top of every customer we're sanitizing that station. And right. Perfect. Um, so I know this, uh, it's hard to be in the coffee business, right? Um, <laughs> margins can be tough sometimes and a, a global pandemic does not make staying in business very easy. Right. So can you kind of share, you know, you, you've made all these adjustments and I think what I love about coffee owners is how resilient and adaptive we are. Um, how has this impacted revenue? Are you still able to uh, make revenue? Are customers still coming in now that, you know, Things have been they, locked down for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, definitely saw definitely saw a major drop. Um, probably about um, probably about like we're probably about, you know, that's fifty to sixty percent of what we normally would. Um, considering everything that happened, we're actually very happy with those numbers. Um, so the big things that again, like we tried to launch in kind of anticipation of that was uh, every we tried to throw as many darts at the board as we could, but we tried to build it around. The idea of what if we even have to close our storefront mm -hmm. um, so the biggest product we did where we started bottling our cold brew and started doing lattes um, like pre basically pre batch lattes um, and those have been uh, and hugely successful like uh, that's really kind of kept us afloat we wow. yeah we went from product to or we went from concept to product in 24 hours Wow a few hundred bottles thinking that was going to be too many and I believe we just sold, just in the last three weeks, we just passed the 2,000 bottle mark already. Whoa. Yeah. Holy smokes. Uh, I mean, a lot of that's our community. Um, the Springfield community has been amazing. Uh, everyone's extremely supportive, um, unbelievably supportive. Uh, it kind of tugs wow. the strings a little bit to see how much they rallied behind it. But yeah. Can you share for people that don't, um, I think I kind of have a cheat sheet here so I can visualize what you guys are doing, but... Yeah. Just kind of go a, a couple levels deeper into like what what that means with with the the bottle and and the pre lattes. Yeah, so we we worked with a, a local brewery to get a hold of the bottles, which let us get get them at a little bit lower cost. Um, and then what we do is we actually build it with a cold brew concentrate, um, so it's a little bit more uh, stable because you don't have to worry about the acidity and espresso going stale over time. Um, and then we have just tried to build unique flavors. Um, so our most popular one is a um, spiced vanilla oat milk. Mm -hmm. And then we just, yeah, make our own syrup, add the cold brew concentrate to the oat milk, which we, and then uh, uh, obviously follow all the sanitary precautions we need and we hook it up on nitrogen and then just fill up the bottles and cap it ourselves right now. So it's a very mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a, you know, like pulling up your own bootstraps kind of situation, but we're, we're yeah. making it work. So, so this isn't really one of the questions we had here, but I think everybody's sort of curious, like what happens post COVID and nobody really knows what is customer right. behavior going to change. Is this something that you anticipate keeping uh, going after things kind of get back to normal if they ever do? Right. Yeah. The, you know, the benefit, the kind of the benefit with, with COVID, I, which feels weird saying that, but yeah. the, like we had obviously all of our shop space that was reserved for customers now is production. So right now bottling is very easy. So we, you know, but it's definitely opened us up to these possibilities, um, like being able to implement, maybe these are things we can keep and keep implementing, especially because they're so popular. Um, and of course things like, uh, again, just to talk about the Joe app, we were, we were already in talks with, implementing the Joe app before COVID really took over. Um, and so like that was something we were already considering and now seeing how, how much of a difference it's made now, it's definitely something that is gonna carry on, I imagine, so. Great, well, ho hopefully, we, we would love that. And I think you know, yeah. our whole goal is to build out features that, that make sense for that. As former baristas, our whole goal is to build tools that fit into your workflow seamlessly um, and um, you know, appeals to the, the behavior of both the baristas and your coffee customers. But I love what you mentioned earlier around your community because we always have the opinion that your coffee shop is, um, it's such a, it's a cornerstone of everybody's community and you're a direct reflection of the community in which you serve, right? And so 
Um, during these hard times, it's I think it's really neat where we're seeing Starbucks shops shut down except for drive through but right. it's the indie coffee that's being creative and finding ways to add new products like what you just mentioned or provide essential food, whether it's, you know, eggs and bread and things for their, their community. So I feel like it's, it's a great opportunity for the coffee industry specifically to really just get those roots down in the community. And now right. to see the community return the favor and support mm -hmm. you and whatnot is, um, it just gives me goosebumps. I, I love it. Yeah. Well, and, and that was a big thing we wanted to do with the bottles too, is it, it was, it was an answer to obviously like we need to figure out ways to bring in revenue so I can pay my staff. Mm -hmm. But it was also like, we saw that people kind of missing that community of being together. And even though they're not spending time together, um, even just on social media, like those bottles have been all over the place and everyone's talking about them to each other. Yeah. And so it kind of made, you know, very like, very like watered down version of like what that community normally was, but it's still like this, like kind of community is forming up because of these products. And that's the big Amazing. reason for us to get behind them is, you know, we have to pay the bills obviously, but this community in the heart of like, that's why we got into this business. And so Absolutely. it's amazing to see. Yeah. Well, and I think that's kind of one of my last questions too, is um, how, what are you guys doing to get, to get the word out? I, I know you guys might have a larger customer base that you have emails or, or whatnot. What's the yeah. best way that you recommend letting your customers know that you're open, you're taking extra precautions to be safety. So the, your staff and they can come in and without the fear of exposure um, and highlighting new products. So, or, or, right. you know, things like Joe, what, what's your guys is, how did you guys go about that? Yeah, so uh, for us, the biggest one is obviously is social media is still our biggest avenue for getting the word out, um, and then and then uh, relying a, a lot on like word of mouth, like you know, like I said, like you said, we've been here for like twelve years, so we have some some uh, you know benefits of like long term customers, but a lot of them that have been coming in, just showing them and making making them aware of like all these precautions that we're taking, not necessarily to brag about it or anything, but just to let them know like they're their safety and our employees safety is something we're going to take very seriously. Um, and them seeing that through social media and just them seeing it themselves is something that they want to tell, they want to tell everyone else. And so yeah. that's been the biggest avenue is really just social media. Um, cool. and just, yeah, showing people that we're doing this because we want to provide our product still and we want to uh, do it in a safe way. Totally. And I think one thing with being that we're in coffee, we're, we're selling, we always joke, we're selling an addictive right. uh, beverage, yeah. right? So I think people are getting kind of cabin fever and wanting to be able to get out and in a healthy way that doesn't put others at risk and whatnot. So mm. I think, um, you know, well, there's some, been some debate back and forth of, you know, what should shops do to flatten the curve and whatnot. And um, I think our opinion is, hey, if there's a 100% contactless way and you can still allow shops to stay in business um, and keep exposure down. Um, we're fully behind it and support it and um, whatnot. So we really appreciate you guys taking those extra steps and going above yeah. and beyond to keep your guys as customers and staff healthy. And um, that was an, that was another reason not to cut you off. Sorry. That was another reason we also went to like these bottles is we were selling them in four packs. So they also, the idea is like bottles and obviously bags of coffee is um, it's something that you can buy once and have a supply for at least a few days. And so that was another idea of like at least eliminating contact of someone having to come in every day to get the cup of coffee is at least now they can order ahead of time. We're also running some deliveries twice a week too on those products that have a little bit better shelf life over time. Yeah. Uh, Cause obviously a, delivering a latte is much more difficult, but a bottle latte, like that's going to have a better shelf life. And then again, like they don't have to get out and they can stop, you know, kind of stock up, so to speak on it. And, hopefully keep themselves safe without having to compromise. And the other nice thing about a ready to drink item is it takes that fear of uh, sometimes the specialty coffee is intimidating, especially brewing coffee at home. Mm -hmm. So while not everyone's ready to buy bags necessarily and brew it at home, maybe because of that intimidation factor. Yeah. Um, now here's a ready to drink option and you can still have that idea of you only had to go out once. And this is going to be good for like four or five days. Wow. So, it, tiny things in the long in like the large scheme of things but just try, that's what we're trying to do is we're all reacting and we're all just trying to figure out what we can do to support our staff and support our community uh through not just through finances but through keeping them safe so absolutely wow that's really you hit on some things i have yet to hear from coffee shops or see and i think that's 
absolutely fantastic. What, that's brilliant <clears throat> to keep, uh, to basically allow them to have, yeah, the stock up and whatnot. Um, and I'll admit, I, uh, even though I was a former barista doing some uh, coffee home brewing methods, I've had to kind of relearn or, or whatnot. So I can definitely um, oh, yeah. understand how it can be a little intimidating. Um, so I think that's, that's brilliant. I love what you guys are doing. And I, uh, I know you're busy. I don't want to take up much more of your time, but I really appreciate this. I think the, the people, um, other owners watching this are going to be super appreciative. It's a scary time for so many when there's so many unknowns. Um, so being able to talk to somebody who has um, been super adaptive and resilient and found ways to, to be open and serve their community uh, in a healthy way, I think is uh, super valuable. So really appreciate all you guys are doing out there. Oh, thank you. And, and thanks for all your support. Honestly, it's uh, all the support you guys have shown and given us has been amazing. So thank you so much. Awesome. Really. Anything we can do, and I might have to follow up after this and see if you want to ship one of those bottles out to my house so I can try it out. Oh, sure, great. sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Nate, I'll let you get back to work. Go make some yeah. amazing coffee. Um, and best of luck. Stay well. And um, look forward to coming down to Springfield and checking out the coffee ethic. ethic myself. Appreciate it. Thanks. Awesome. Take care. All right. Bye.